Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Today I have my August 2019 huge candle and wax empties to share with you. I was a burning and melting machine in August apparently. I have 14 candles and 63 wax melts, which actually blows my own mind. <laughs> as I was pulling everything out of the basket, I was like, wow, apparently I was endeavoring to scent my entire cul-de-sac last month. My thing for August was, is it fall yet? I was totally feeling fall. I was over summer scents. I melted spicy bakery, chai scents, apple pie, coffee, and just a variety of other fall scents. And it was a great smelling month for me. Let me know in the comments below if you moved into fall in August or if you were still burning summer. As with all my empties videos, I will start with the random bits first and then move on to the wax melt and the candles. As always, I will leave the timestamps below so if you're only interested in a particular portion of the video, you can click on that timestamp and it will take you directly to that portion of the video. I also am leaving the individual new candle timestamps below so if you're only interested in a particular candle scent, you can click on the timestamp and it will take you there. As I do have a ton to get through, I'm going to go ahead and jump on in. So if you're interested in hearing about what I use, melted, and burned in August, Let's get started. We finished three hand soaps in August. My grandmother finished the Love Is Here hand soap in the summer suntan scent. I absolutely love this packaging as I have mentioned in other videos and this scent was really, really nice. It was not a spot on dupe to the candle. It didn't smell exactly like, like copper tone sunscreen, but it was like a sunscreen mixed with lemon. There was a nice amount of citrus in this scent and it was really enjoyable. I finished this Boardwalk Vanilla Tone hand soap. I love the label. So pretty. It just makes me think of late summer. This scent was fabulous. There was a nice amount of vanilla and marshmallow goodness mixed with just the right amount of caramel to sort of sweeten it up. It was very gourmand and yummy and delicious and it did linger on my hands for quite a while so I really enjoyed this one and I would definitely pick this one up again in the future. And the last hand set we finished is Sweater Weather. I adore this packaging. Look at that little hedgehog. How freaking adorable is he? This scent was a spot on dupe to the candle. It smelled exactly like the candle. I wish the body care fragrance was the same as this. It was so refreshing and just perfect for this time of year. The soap was actually a dark blue and it was just really enjoyable to use. I have already picked up a couple more of these because I really love the packaging and the scent. We finished a pocket bag in a thousand wishes. Actually, my grandmother pretty much finished this one. She loves these type of pretty feminine kind of scents and we're always using hand sanitizer when we're out and about. So she really enjoyed this one, I think. I finished this little free sample sugar scrub in the bathing gardens coffee sprinkles. Y'all already know that I actually love her scrubs. They are so wonderful. This scent was really, really nice. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about a coffee scrub, but it was fabulous. It was coffee, spicy, and a little bit of bakery. It kind of reminded me of Moon Spice Cookie from Destination Wax. Not a dupe, but like in the same family. And I really like this one. I would consider getting it in a full size. I finished this hand cream in French Lavender. I really do miss these two ounce hand creams. To me, they were a great size to like put by your bath room. I do like the smaller one ounces for my purse, but these are really great to have around the house by the sink to moisturize your hands after you wash them. I don't love the French lavender scent from Bath & Body Works. It's nice, but that amber in it isn't my absolute favorite, but it was still enjoyable and I really did like the packaging. I finished this sample size in the Bathing Gardens Lavender Meringue Mint Body Lotion. I actually really enjoyed it. The scent was really, really nice, really refreshing, a nice blend of the lavender and the mint, and the lotion itself was quite moisturizing. My grandmother actually finished the shower gel in Mango Mandarin. She really liked this scent. She said it really smelled quite citrusy and she enjoyed it and it did seem to linger on her skin for quite a while. I finished this soap in Destination Wax's Apple Sage. This scent is absolutely fabulous. It's a clean and herbal blend of apples and light sage. It is not a cologne type scent. It's not masculine, but it's very fresh. The apple has a nice sweetness. The sage is very herbal, and I absolutely love it. It is sort of in the same family as Sweater Weather, if I would put it in like a categorization of scents. I have already repurchased this soap in this scent because it is wonderful. If you haven't tried her soap, 
soaps and you like bar soaps, I highly recommend giving them a, giving them a try. And we use a couple of wallflowers in August. Um, I finished the two pack and apple crumble. It is a nice apple bakery type scent, but heavier on the apple and the spices. And it's just wonderful. It has not come back in candle form for some reason for years and years, but it is nice to have the wallflower for the scent. We finished a sweet tiramisu wallflower. This one did not perform well at all. The first, I would say fourth of the wallflower bowl was actually pretty nice. It was a very light scent, just a slightly sort of creamy, slight coffee vibe that came through. And then it just stopped working. I didn't get really anything else from it. And I had this in my smallest bathroom where typically the wallflowers feel, they smell quite strong. So I did take it out and throw it away. Wouldn't repurchase it based on the performance. And then the last wallflower is Harvest Gathering. This was one of the wallflowers from several years ago before they changed the shape of the wallflowers and it performed perfectly. The scent was so strong. It not only scented my master bathroom, but also my master bedroom. It went all the way down. I love the scent. It has this sort of mixed berry, apple, spicy kind of vibe. I love it. The wallflower worked wonderfully. And that is all of the body care and hand soaps and random bits and I will move right on into the wax melts. Okie dokie. As I mentioned in the intro, I've got 63 wax melts here. So I'm going to try to get through these as quickly as possible while still giving y'all enough information about the scent itself. The first thing I finished is this Vintage Chic Scents, Fiona the Supreme Witch. This is Cider Cupcakes, Cream Cheese Frosting, Granny Smith Apples, and Waffle Cone. The Granny Smith Apple in this scent really makes itself known to me. It's tart and sweet, which is a little bit of a like a bakery aspect that comes through, but mostly you get the green apple. Definitely more fruit than bakery. The Shrink and Throw is about a 6 in my 20 watt and 24 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this Mini Melter Bag and Rose Girls Apple Fritters. This one I absolutely love. It was a top 18 scent of 2018. Spicy Apple Bakery perfection. It's delicious. The Shrink and Throw is about a six and a half, seven in my Scentsy Accord Warmer. I finished this mini cake bag and Destination Wax Cinnamon Raisin Bread. This is warm raisin bread swirled with cinnamon right out of the oven. Another one I absolutely love. Another top 18 scent of 2018. This one smells just like the Pepperidge Farm Cinnamon Raisin Bread. You toasted it. You put a nice slather of butter on it. You get the cinnamon. You get the raisin. The toast. It is absolutely delicious. The Shrink and Throw is about a seven and a half, eight for one mini cake in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this Bath and Body Works wax melt in warm apple pie. This was their old wax melts formulation from like three years ago, I think. I absolutely adore the scent. It, I say hands down the best apple pie scent that I've ever smelled. And I have smelled a lot of apple pie scents, but this one is just so authentic. You get the apple, it's cooked. You get the pastry, the pie crust, the butter. It's absolutely delicious. The strength and throw of the wax melt was about a five for half of the melt in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this Kringle Melt in Apple Pie. I love their labels. This one is a spicy baked cinnamon apple scent. I didn't get any crust and I didn't get any butter, but it was a nice cinnamon apple scent. It was just more like a potpourri scent though than like a pie scent to me personally. The Shrink and Throw was about a seven for half of the scent shot in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this melt in the Bathing Garden Sugared Apple Pie. This one is definitely a sweeter sugary apple pie scent. The sugary aspect definitely comes through. It does feel like you've got the crust with like a lot of sugar on top of it. So it reminds me of her sugared pie crust scent plus apple. It was nice. The strength and throw was about a six in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished the sample in Empire Alchemy Cider Lane Raisin Bread and a hint of ginger cookie. And I really like this scent. It's a nice variation of Cider Lane. The Cider Lane definitely came through predominantly when it was melting. I would have liked a more, I would have liked more of that raisin bread and the ginger cookie to come through and sort of help balance out the Cider Lane but it was still a nice variation. The Strength and Throw was about a six in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this melt in the Bathing Gardens Vanilla Dumpling. This is baked apple dumplings in rich vanilla fudge. And this was another top 18 of 18 cent. Delicious apple dumpling goodness. It is just such a good and unique scent. The Strength and Throw was about a seven in my 20 watt hot plate warmer for half of the apple shape. I finished the scent shot in Southbound's Poison Pie. This one is blueberries, Granny Smith apples, buttery cream, and cinnamon with notes of fresh baked crust. And this one was definitely more of the blueberry pie kind of vibes. I got hints of the apple, but it really registered more to me as like a blueberry pie. You got sort of that candied blueberry sweetness that came through. Not a lot of spice, not a lot of crust, just a hint of apple. It was nice though. The strength and throw was about a seven for the scent shot split between my two warmers, 24 and 20 watt hot plate warmers. I finished 
is the scent shot in wolf wicks autumn orchard this is an apple cider donuts type the bath and body Works scent it is the same scent as southbound's ghostly brewery there's lots of vendors that have this scent i love the scent it's really good the strength and throw is about a four for the scent shot in my 20 watt hot plate warmer this scent tends to be lighter in general across all vendors i finished the shape in the bathing gardens pagan moon this is apple pear grove with blood red strawberry and fall leaves this one definitely registers a, as a fruity scent to me you get a lot of the sweet fruit and there is this sort of syrupy note that comes through as well the strength and throw was about a five in my 20 watt hot plate warmer I finished this Lily Put two pack block and destination waxes Bartlett pear. You can see I've had this one for quite a while. This is a great scent. It is the same pear scent as Rose Girl's pear scent. I think it's supposed to be like a Bath and Body Works dupe. So it definitely has a bit of a like body care kind of vibe while also being very sweet and juicy at the same time. Vintage Chic Scents has the same pear scent, Sassy Girl Aroma. So if you're familiar with those pears, this one is the same as those scents. This one's really good. I actually like it even though it's not super authentic. It's still really nice and it's also very strong. I put one cube in my 24 hot plate warmer, one in my 20 watt hot plate warmer, and the combined strength and throw was a nine and a half, like 10. It was like, probably shouldn't have done two cubes, <laughs> but it was fantastic. Absolutely loved it and I'll definitely repurchase it. I finished this clam in the bathing garden root beer funnel cake. This one is a strong root beer, vanilla cream, powdered sugar, and funnel cake scent. Another top 18 of 18 cent. I absolutely love this. This one so much if you like your root beer scents you definitely have to check this one out you get a lot of the creamy vanilla amaziness mixed with the root beer so it really does come across as a root beer float to me and just a little bit of that funnel cake comes through the bakery aspect but it's just so delicious and creamy and wonderful and it smells like a sweet and creamy root beer float I love it the strength and throw is about an eight and a half for one cube in my 20 watt hot plate warmer I finished this scent shot in destination waxes coffee coca Kona mocha this is rich Kona coffee with chocolate, vanilla cream, coconut, and cardamom. And this one is definitely a chocolatey mocha coffee scent with the warm spices. It's more chocolate than I personally prefer and it is strong. The strength and throw is a nine and a half for half of the scent shot in my 24 watt hot plate warmer. I was like blown away with how strong this scent was. It's not my favorite. I wouldn't repurchase it but if you like your chocolate mocha coffee scents I think you would love this one. I finished this ghost shape in Vintage Chic Scents, The Great Coffee Pumpkin. This is pumpkin layer cake, cream cheese frosting, and cafe cubano. And this is a coffee and creamy pumpkin bakery scent. It's a nice balance between the two. I definitely didn't feel like the coffee was like super strong and over overbearing. It was balanced nicely by the cake. The strength and throw for was a six and a half for two pieces in my 24 watt and 24 watt hot plate warmers. I finished this pink mermaid wax melt in Harvest Gathering. This one is supposed to be a dupe of Bath and Body Works Harvest Gathering and it is close but it's not exact. This one has a lot more of the apple spiciness than the Bath and Body Works scent does but it is close and I really enjoyed it. The strength and throw was about a seven for the scent shot split between my 24 and 20 watt hot plate warmers. I finished the scent shot in Wolfwick's Coffee Cabin. This one is coffee, leaves, cinnamon apple bread, and cider honey cinnamon. To me, this came across as a spicy coffee scent. I really didn't pick up much bakery. There was sort of this plastic undertone, and I've had that same plastic undertone with several of these scents. Not all of them, but several. The strength and throw was about a three and a half for the scent shot in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this Easy Melt Cup in Yankee Candles Cafe El Fresco. I really enjoyed this scent. It's a creamy, sweet coffee scent. A nice balance of the coffee and the sweet caramel. It reminds me of a caramel frappuccino. The strength and throw was about a seven and a half, eight for the first rotation in my centerpiece, about a six and a half for the second rotation, and about a five for the third rotation. And then I did do it for fourth rotation, and I did get a little bit of scent from it, but it was pretty much dead at that point. I will continue to repurchase this one. I finished this clam in the bathing gardens oatmeal cookie. This one is oatmeal cookies with cinnamon and rich sugar. This was listed on the site as a discounted clam, so she offered like, I think it was about 20 something plus cents at a discounted price. I think it was about 315, so I don't know if she was experimenting with some new scents, and maybe she didn't quite get the throw that she wanted to put out in her regular lineup. The scent itself was really nice. I got a lot of brown sugar, a little bit of like a cinnamon sugar cookie kind of vibe. It was really nice, but it was quite light for what I expect from a bathing garden scent. The strength and throw is about a three and a half, maybe a four for two cubes in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. When I tried one cube, it was, I really couldn't smell it unless I was standing over the dish. So I could definitely understand why this was maybe a discounted clam. The scent was nice, but the throw just wasn't really there. I finished the shape in Vintage Chic Scents Lizzie Borden's house. This is caramel cinnamon marshmallow latte. And this is a creamy 
caramel coffee scent. I definitely get more of the caramel and the cream than I do of the coffee in this one. The strength and throw was about a six for two pieces in my 20 and 24 watt hot plate warmers. I finished this scent shot in Wolfwick's Halloween Puppuccino. I think that label is super cute. The description of this one is cider donut, sugar cookie, toasted marshmallow. I get mostly the cider donut note from this, which I like. It didn't smell like coffee. I guess Puppuccino, I was thinking it was going to be like a coffee scent, but it was more of the cider donut kind of scent, which I really enjoyed the scent. The strength and throw was about a four and a half for the scent shot in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this clam and Barrett wax crafts cookie jar. This one to me smelled like zucchini bread cookies. I didn't write the notes down, but I was expecting like sugar cookies or chocolate chip cookies, oatmeal cookies, maybe kind of all smashed together in a scent. But to me, it had a lot of zucchini bread, which I'm not personally a fan of zucchini bread, but there was a cookie note as well. So it kind of like, again, it smelled like a zucchini bread cookie. So if you like zucchini bread, you might really like this scent. It just wasn't my personal favorite. The strength and throw was about a seven for one cube in my 25 watt Scentsy bowl warmer. I finished this clam in the Super Tarts Fake and Bake. This one is an amazing bakery goodness. This was also a top 18 of 2018 scent for me. It's very, very popular. It is fabulous. Definitely makes you still feel like you're baking something in your house. It is just delicious. So yummy. The strength and throw is about a seven and a half, eight for one cube in my 20 watt hot plate warmer or in my Scentsy 25 watt bowl warmer. I finished this shape in the bathing garden spell caster. This one is pecan pie, roasted chestnuts, and charred peaches dusted with brown sugar. And I did not prefer this one. <laughs> I got peach and a lot of sweetness and I just did not like it. Didn't prefer it. The strength throw was about a six in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished the scent shot in Golden Willow Wax's Ginny Weasley Drinks Martinis. This is spicy apple ginger martinis and I really enjoyed this one. Definitely the mac apple was very dominant in this scent. You got that crisp red juicy mac apple and just a little bit of like a ginger syrup kind of came through as well. It was nice. The strength and throw was about a seven for the scent shot split between my 20 and 24 watt hot plate warmers. I finished the shape and vintage chic scent Sanderson Sisters. This is green apple, caramel, candy corn, and marshmallow. It is a sweet green apple scent. Definitely more of a candied aspect than the Fiona's The Supreme Witch scent. It's a nice scent to transition into fall in my opinion. The strength and throw was about a five for two pieces in my 20 and 24 hot plate warmer so it wasn't super strong for me. I finished this The Shapes and Vintage Chic Scents ET Phone Home. This is sweet pumpkin, warm spices, cider, and vanilla crunch. And look how much better those labels look. They are so pretty compared to the other labels. Like I just love it. She has the scent description. She has the, the date, the pour date, and her logo. I think they're just really really pretty. This one was a really yummy pumpkin spiced bakery scent. It was just like it checked all the boxes of amazing pumpkin fall bakery goodness. I really enjoyed it. The strength and throw was about a five and a half for two pieces split between my 20 and 24 watt hot plate warmers so I wish it was a bit stronger. I finished this rainbow brittle bag in Simo's cannoli supreme. This one was a nice mix bakery scent. You got some of that fried doughy goodness mixed with like some cookie kind of sweeter vanilla type of scents. It was quite nice. The strength and throw was about a three and a half for a piece in my 20 watt hot plate warmer and about a four and a half five in my Scentsy Accord warmer where I could put three pieces in the three different dishes. I finished this clam and southbound cinnamon sugar toast. This is French toast sprinkled with cinnamon sugar. This was a nice bready cinnamon sugar toast scent. It wasn't overly spicy or overly sweet. You definitely got the bread sort of French toast aspect and I really enjoyed the scent. The strength and throw was about a five for one cube in my 20 watt hot plate warmer and about a seven and a half, eight for two cubes in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this scent shot in Destination Wax's Lavender Nicotina. This is two thirds lavender twilight and one third tobacco sugar and this scent is absolutely amazing. Y'all already know that I absolutely love her Lavender Twilight. It is a spot on dupe to the bath bomb, spot on. And then she added the tobacco sugar, which added this really nice warmth to it. You still get a lot of the Lavender Twilight, but the tobacco sugar just adds something really warm and amazing and sophisticated. And I just love this blend. The strength and throw was about an eight for a fourth of the scent shot in my Bath and Body Works bulb warmer. So very strong. I finished the scent shot in Destination Wax's French Baguette. This is the perfect yeasty, crusty baguette. Very, very similar spot on dupe to Bath and Body Works French baguette scent. To me, it is great alone or as a blender. The strength and throw is about a seven and a half for a fourth of the scent shot in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this wax melt in Kringle's Pumpkin Frosting, another beautiful label. This smells exactly like it's supposed to. It is a sweet icing with pumpkin spice. You definitely get more of that icing, confectioner sugar, and just a little bit of the pumpkin spice comes through. It is nice. The strength and throw is about a seven for the scent shot split into thirds and my Scentsy Accord warmer. 
The next one I finished is this Bathing Garden Pumpkin and Pumpkin Espresso. This is Dark Espresso blends with a creamy pumpkin filling. And this one was really nice. I really enjoyed this one a lot. It was like the creamy inside of a pumpkin pie mixed with coffee. And it was a really nice balance between the two. A little bit more, I would say, pumpkin though than espresso. The espresso seemed to be more of the background note, which was fine with me. The strength and throw is about a six and a half in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this Scent Shot and Destination Waxes Coffee Espresso Macchiato. This is rich espresso sweetened with a dash of steamed milk this bad boy is strong this one was like a fresh pot of coffee i actually didn't prefer the scent it was just a bit too bitter and strong for me personally the shrinking though is about a nine and a half for about a third of the scent shot in my 24 watt hot plate warmer and then the next time i melted it, i added a little bit of the french baguette with it and that actually was quite nice and then i melted it again and put a little bit of the cinnamon vanilla sugar so when i mix it with some other things it definitely toned down that bitterness I sweetened it up with some other things and that made it much more of a tolerable scent So for me if I were to get it again, it would be like a blender scent something if I wanted to add some coffee to a scent Then this would be great for that But if you love your strong coffee scents, I think you'd love this one I finished the scent shot in Empire Alchemy's Frontierland S'mores. This is graham cracker, dusted churros, a marshmallow chocolate dip. The graham cracker came through as the forefront note for me, followed by the churros. And then you got just a hint of chocolate, which I was happy about because I'm not a huge fan of chocolate scents. This one was nice. The strength and throw was about a five and a half for the scent shot divided in my Scentsy Accord Warmer. I finished this shape in the Bathing Garden Sweet Honey Pear. The notes read a jus pear with apples, honey butter, musk, and vanilla. This definitely came through as a body care scent, a wearable scent versus an edible foodie scent. So if you were ordering this one thinking it was a foodie scent, it was not to me. It was definitely more of a wearable pear scent. It was still nice. It was very different than anything else I melted. This month, the strength and throw is about a seven for the shape in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this shape in the Bathing Gardens Banshee Dreams. This is pumpkin cupcake, espresso, coconut, and vanilla marshmallow. I really, really enjoy this scent. It is sweeter than the pumpkin espresso scent. It definitely has a bakery aspect. The coffee is just in the background. It's not dominant. It comes across more as a pumpkin bakery scent. And it's just really nice. The strength and throw is about a seven and a half in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this flower cake in Destination Wax's Chai Tea, another old scent from 2017, but it still performed absolutely beautifully. I love this scent. It is a great, perfect chai blend. You get the cardamom, you get all of the herbs of the chai tea, you get the herbalness of the tea. It doesn't have a latte aspect. It doesn't have any kind of milkiness or anything like that. It just smells like a warm chai tea. Very, very nice. The strength and throw is about a seven and a half in my 24 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this melt in the Bathing Gardens Maple Syrup and Clove. This one is a super sweet maple scent with warm clove. It is a tad too sweet for me, but just a tad. Like I thought when I saw this as a free sample, I was like, oh goodness, I'm not gonna like this at all. Maple syrup is gonna be way too sweet, but it actually wasn't overpoweringly sweet. I liked it enough that I could melt it and I did find some enjoyment out of it it wasn't my favorite but it, I could see this being a really nice blender scent as well because it was sweet but the clove in this was really nice I think it's the clove that actually made me like it because it was a nice amount of clove very warm the strength and throw was an eight and a half in my 20 watt hot plate warmer I finished this shape in the Bathing Gardens Goo-alicious. This is toasted hazelnuts, dark espresso, butter rum, marshmallow. This was a creamy, nutty, dark rum scent. There definitely is sort of this like dark syrupy aspect to this. It is sweet, but it is sort of balanced by the other notes, so it wasn't overly sweet. It did kind of remind me of like some of the maple bourbon, those kind of candles from Bath and Body Works. You kind of have like a boozy sweetness. The drink and throw is about a six in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this shape in the Bathing Gardens Banana Pumpkin Marshmallow. This is Bananas Foster with pumpkin cake and marshmallow. The pumpkin aspect of this reminded me of Southbound's pumpkin cream puffs, I think is what it's called, or pumpkin pudding cake maybe. There was sort of this like almost steamed souffle kind of pumpkin aspect to the scent mixed with the sweet bananas. I was a little bit odd actually and not my personal favorite. The strength and throw was about a seven and a half though in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. The next one I finished is the Sassy Girl Aroma Chunk Bag in Blackberry Bramble Tea Noel. I'm actually a little bit sad to see this one go but it is from 2017 so I was like okay just let it go. Let it go Elsa. I love this scent. It is a spot on dupe to the Blackberry Bramble Tea from Bath and Body Works mixed with the sweet vanilla bean Noel and it's just perfection. I love it. This was the first time that I had found this dupe from any vendor so I just kind of holds a special place in my heart. I really enjoyed it. The strength and throw was about an eight for a chunk in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this sample in the Bathing Gardens apple cake batter. This one's a nice apple bakery scent but it was a little 
little bit light. The strength in that was about a three and a half, four for the shape in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I did purchase this one in like the little cake shape. So I'm hoping that with some additional cure time, it will be a little bit stronger when I go to melt this next year. I finished the Scent Shot Empire Alchemy's Twilight Twisted Peppermint Vanilla Ice Cream in Golden Sands. And the first thing I get is definitely the Twilight. It's the most dominant note, I would say, followed by the Golden Sands. I get just a hint of the Twisted Peppermint. A little bit of that methylated peppermint does come through. I think it's a really nice blend. Very refreshing, but also very relaxing at the same time. The Shrink and Throw is about a seven and a half for a fourth of the scent shot in my Bath and Body Works 25 watt bowl warmer. And I would definitely get this one again if she does put it into the normal rotation. I finished the scent shot in Wolfwick's Boxer Bakery. This one is powdered donuts, snickerdoodle, and brown sugar. This one is a sweet and spicy bakery blend. The Shrink and Throw is about a four for the entire tea of this cup in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished the scent shot in Empire Alchemy's Vanilla Crumb Donut. This is a house blend of donut, cinnamon, sugar, vanilla, donut, bakery. And I absolutely love donut scents and this one is no exception. It is just a really nice vanilla, slightly cinnamon sugared donut. The cinnamon isn't dominant. You definitely get more of the vanilla and the, just the plain donut with a little bit of the cinnamon sugar. I really enjoyed it. The strength though was about a five and a half for the scent shot split between my 20 and 25 watt hot plate warmer. So I wish this one was a little bit stronger. I finished this experimental blend in Empire Alchemy's Hazelnut Coffee, Whipped Cream, Condensed Milk, and Cookie Butter. I mostly got the cookie butter in this scent, which I'm not mad at because I like cookie butter, but I didn't get much of the coffee or like a creamy vanilla. So I think this one might need a little bit of tweaking. I liked it, but the cookie butter pretty much dominated the scent and it was almost like I was just melting a cookie butter scent, but I would have liked the blend to come through a bit better, I think, which is why she does these experimentals. The strength and throw was about a five for half of the scent shot in my 24 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this clam in Goose Creek's French Toast. That makes me want French Toast, that picture. This one is delicious. So yummy, buttery, bready, slightly sweet. It is delicious. I really enjoyed this one and I hope they bring this one back. The strength and throw is about an eight and a half for two cubes in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished the scent shot in Goose Creek's White Icing Cinnamon Roll, and this one is one that I've repurchased several times now. It is a great cinnamon roll scent. You get a nice amount of the bakery in this, plus the cream cheese and the cinnamon, but it's the bakery note I think that really makes me love this one because sometimes cinnamon roll scents, you just get the cinnamon and the icing, but not the bakery. And this, you get it all. It's delicious. The treat and throw is about a seven and a half for two cubes in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this clam and super tarts all American, which is apple pie a la mode. This one is a spicy, but not not overly spicy apple pie scent with a nice dollop of ice cream. You definitely get the creamy ice cream. There's definitely sort of this underlying bakery sweetness in there that where that apple and the spice actually is in the background. It's really nice. The strength and throw is about a seven and a half eight for one cube in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this clam and zapes flat white. This is espresso and vanilla cream. You definitely get the bitter espresso, but it is balanced very nicely by that, that vanilla cream. I like the scent, but I didn't love the scent, but it was quite strong. The strength and throw is about an eight for one cube in my 25 watt bowl warmer. I finished this chunk in Rose Girls Are You Ready For Some Football? And this one is Vanilla Crunch Donuts, Clove, Cinnamon, Apple, Citrus, Raspberry, and Peach. And this one is a really nice scent. Really enjoyed this one. It was sort of like similar to Bath and Body Works Harvest Gathering, like in the same family. Not a dupe, but it definitely had that sort of mixed fruit, fall spices, kind of craft store kind of vibe like Harvest Gathering does. And I really enjoyed it. The thing though was about a seven and a half in my Scentsy Accord Warmer. I finished this pie in the Bathing Gardens Cardamom Apple Pie. This is spicy cardamom blends with hot baked apple pie. And that is exactly what it is. It is loads of the warm cardamom spice mixed with a spicy apple pie. You really don't get much of a bakery or crust note. You definitely get more of the apple pie spices, even more so than the apples themselves. But I actually liked it a lot. The strength though was about a seven for one of the pie slices in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this apple pie shape in Country Lane Keepsakes Deep Dish Apple pie. I melted half of it in my 20 watt hot plate warmer and I just couldn't smell it. I finished the shape in the bathing garden cinnamon jingle. This is sugared cinnamon bark cardamom with vanilla extract, marshmallow, powdered sugar, and buttercream. And for some reason this definitely did kind of lean more toward a Christmas scent versus fall. 
even though the notes are cinnamon and cardamom, it did kind of, for some reason, when it was melting, it did have a little bit of a holiday kind of vibe. And this is one of her holiday scents. I actually really liked it. It was a sweeter, spicy scent. So you definitely got that marshmallow and the sugar and the buttercream. And the spices were actually kind of on the background, which was actually really nice. The treat and throw was about a five and a half, six in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished this pumpkin shape in the bathing gardens toxic earth this is coffee whiskey and caramel and cake and i don't actually prefer this one either there was a strong boozy note in this one that came through with the sweetness and it just was a little bit too sweet and rum like for me personally the strength and throw though was about a six and a half in my 20 watt hot plate warmer the next scent i finished is destination wax's red pear i absolutely love this scent it is a crunchy crisp juicy ripe pear fresh from the farmer's market it smells exactly Exactly like a fresh crisp pear and I absolutely love it. It's very authentic. Great as a blender or by itself. The strength and throw is about a six and a half seven and my 20 watt hot plate warmer and I'll definitely get this one again. I finished this clam and super tart Gandalf. This is magically delicious coffee beans and sweet cream and this is a nice sweeter coffee scent. You definitely get that magically delicious creamy vanilla marshmallow goodness mixed with the coffee. I would say the coffee is actually in the background and the magically delicious and the cream actually kind of come through first but it is really nice balance and it's just a really nice scent. The shrink and throw is about a seven and a half for one cube in my 25 watt Scentsy bulb, warm, bulb warmer. I finished this clam in Better Homes and Gardens caramel bread pudding. This one is really nice actually. It is a caramel bakery scent but it's not too sweet. You definitely get the caramel but you do get this sort of bread pudding not overly sweet bakery note that kind of does have like a bit of like a doughy kind of scent. It is actually quite nice and I liked it. The shrink and throw is about a seven and a half in my 25 watt bulb warmer and about an eight in my 20 watt hot plate warmer for one cube and I would consider getting another clam of this one. I finished this clam in Destination Wax's Cinnamon Vanilla Sugar. This is spicy rich sweet blend of cinnamon cardamom sugar and vanilla and that is exactly what it smells like. The description says it all. I really enjoyed this one. I melted it by itself but I also blended it with her pie her zucchini bread pie crust and then I put a little bit of apple with it and it was just fabulous. It really is a great blender great by itself. If you like cinnamon vanilla sugar and then being able to blend it this one is for you. The drinking throw is about an eight for about a third of a scent shot in my 24 watt hot plate warmer. Speaking of zucchini bread pie crust I finished the scent shot in zucchini bread and buttery pie crust. Now you've heard me say before that I'm not a huge fan of zucchini bread and that is true but this I actually really like. I really like Rebecca the zucchini bread blends they're not what I'm used to from a lot of other vendors there isn't this sort of like undertone in her zucchini bread that I pick up in some others zucchini bread and this one was really really great I did try it by itself but as I mentioned I did blend it with the cinnamon sugar the pot the apple and like sort of made my own apple pie scent and it was really really good a great scent the shrinking though was about a seven and a half for a third of the scent shot by itself in my 24 watt hot plate warmer I finished this scent shot in Golden Willow's Fall on the Fruit Loop. This is peaches, apple, spice, and wood smoke. And I also really enjoyed this one. This one definitely reminded me of Harvest Gathering from Bath and Body Works. Again, maybe not a spot on dupe, but definitely in that same family. You could have got the craft store blend of the fruits and the spices, and it was really, really enjoyable. The shrink and throw was about an eight for the scent shot split between my 20 and 24 watt hot plate warmers. I finished this six pack mini cake in Destination Wax's Moon Spice Cookie, Sugar Cookies, Coffee, and Celtic Moon Spice. Y'all know I absolutely love the scent. This was a top 17 of 2017 scent. Absolutely love it. Amazing coffee bakery scent. Strong. About an eight and a half for one mini cake and my 24 watt hot plate warmer. I finished the shapes in the bathing gardens fireside s'mores. This is vanilla graham crackers with toasted marshmallow drizzled with chocolate and cooked over a campfire. And this one I actually enjoyed. I'm not a huge fan of s'mores scents. I've come to find out. I think it's sometimes they have too much chocolate. Sometimes the graham cracker note doesn't agree with me. But this one I actually love. Light. There's a nice amount of that campfire, bonfire, slightly smoky vibes that did come through that balanced out the sweetness of the s'mores. And there was just a drizzle of chocolate. It wasn't overpoweringly chocolate. So I actually like this one. The shrink and throw was about a seven for one of the shapes in my 20 watt hot plate warmer. I finished the scent shot in Destination Wax's zucchini bread pear. This is zucchini bread made with juicy red pears, not spicy. And that is exactly what it is. I've already talked about her red pear scent. I absolutely love it. And I actually really like this one. I have not ordered this one because again I tend to stay away from zucchini bread and Rebecca sent it to me as a free sample with one of my orders and I'm so glad she did because it is absolutely wonderful. I actually loved it. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. 
that zucchini bread mixed with the pear just perfection definitely will be repurchasing this one really really enjoyed it the strength and throw was about an eight for half of the scent shot in my 24 watt hot plate warmer and lastly, woo, but certainly not least, I finished the scent shot in Destination Wax's Apple Sage. This is a clean herbal blend of apples and light sage, and I absolutely love this scent. I talked about the soap earlier on in the video. This scent is amazing, clean, fresh, herbal, but also you get some sweetness from the apple. It's not cologne or masculine at all. It's just perfect for this time of year, and I absolutely love it. Strength and Throw is about an eight and a half for half a scent shot in my 24 hot plate warmer, so quite strong. We'll definitely be repurchasing this in larger quantities very soon. Love it. Well, woo, okie dokie, that is it. 63 different melts this month. Let me know in the comments below what you melted in August. I always love to hear from you. If you are only here for the wax melts, thank you so much. I will rearrange and move right on into the candles. Overall, I am really happy with the candles that I finished last month. I got through 14. My Is It Fall Yet theme was amazing. A lot of these are sort of traditional fall scents, but some of them definitely were nice transitional scents into fall. The first candle I finished in August is the Sweet Tiramisu candle that came out during semi-annual sale. The notes are whipped sweet cream, vanilla sponge cake, and fresh brewed Italian espresso. And I did enjoy this one. To me, it smelled like a creamy vanilla sponge cake. Almost sort of got this like pudding, custardy kind of vibe with just hints of coffee. It definitely had a dessert vibe. It definitely, you know, made me think of tiramisu because that idea was already implanted in my head. Had I not known it was going to be a tiramisu scent or had they maybe called it something different, then I might have associated it with something else. But mostly the vanilla cream sponge cake, the pudding vibe came through. It was actually really nice. The strength and thaw was about a six and a half, sometimes a little weaker, sometimes a little bit stronger. I wish it had been a bit stronger. It didn't really hold my open concept, but it was fine for like my bedroom. Overall, the burn was great actually. No issues at all. It was a medium fast burner, which was great because it wasn't overly sooty. I could trim the wicks just a little bit. It burned clean with no problems whatsoever. I did keep the wicks trimmed four hour burn time and it was great scent. It wouldn't be a candle that I feel the need to stock up on, but I did enjoy it. The next one I finished is this pumpkin coconut and this label was from 2016, I believe. So three falls ago. Oh my gosh, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. The notes are spiced pumpkin, toasted coconut, creamy vanilla, and sea salted caramel. And I really like this scent. You definitely get the coconut, like you put sweetened coconut shreds in the oven and you slightly toasted it. And then you definitely get a lot of of a creamy vanilla caramel sweetness mixed with that toasted coconut and it's really nice definitely more coconut than pumpkin but it's not overly sweet like a lot of their like caramel heavy scents tend to be the shrinks and throw is about a six and a half which i swear this scent used to be stronger it did struggle a little bit so that's probably what contributed to the strength and throw issues the wicks were very tiny from the start i did have to cotton ball this one time at the fourth mark and then once i cotton balled it one time there were no issues after afterwards but it was still slower to pull in general i did let this one burn well over four hours probably about six to eight even on some days the very last couple of burns the scent itself did start to change because i let it burn for so long the fragrance oils burned away and i was left with that paraffin wax not great smell that sometimes happens when I do that. I do however really like the scent and if they brought it back again in the future I would definitely pick it up again. The next candle I finished is the Bath and Body Works Coconut Macaroon. I love the label. Look at the adorable little hedgehog. Look how freaking cute. I love the color of this label. I love the blue and the grays and the browns. I just think it's really pretty and the lids are absolutely adorable this year. The notes of coconut macaroon are toasted coconut, fresh baked cookie, vanilla bean and a touch of spice and this definitely absolutely is not pumpkin coconut i think a lot of people including myself when we first saw the show of at test stores thought that it might be but it's definitely not this one to me smells like a coconut and almond cookie and i say almond cookie specifically because it's not very sweet you would actually think there would be quite a bit of sweetness in it but it's not sweet really at all so it definitely comes across more of a non-sweetened sort of hard biscuity kind of cookie i actually think there needed to be like a touch of caramel or maybe a touch of cream in this scent and i think that really would have elevated the scent overall because for me it was just a bit bland and it was just sort 
sort of okay. It's definitely what I consider like a one and done for me personally. The strength and throw was on average about a six and a half. Sometimes a little bit stronger, sometimes a little bit weaker. The burn itself though was absolutely fine. No issues. It was very clean burning as you can see. The wax is still white for the most part. Very, very minimal soot. It was a medium burner, so it did have kind of small little mushroom tops that I would trim off. I barely trimmed the mushroom tops and I did keep it in a sleeve. Kept it to about four hour burn times and it was absolutely a great burning candle and the label is precious, but I just didn't love the scent. The next candle I finished is the Cinnamon Irish Cream and again, a super cute label with the owl and the squirrel and just sort of the muted tones of the colors. I really like it. The notes of this one are cinnamon spice liqueur, Irish cream, and French vanilla. And I really, really like this scent. To me, it smells like a creamy cinnamon buttercream frosting with just a swirl of the Bailey's Irish cream. Especially when it was burning, the Bailey's Irish cream, which was a sort of present and made itself known on cold sniff, really wasn't as present when it was actually burning. It was actually quite delicious. It was about a medium strength and throw, five, maybe a five and a half, which is still better than a lot of other candle companies, but not what I expect from Bath and Body Works. You know, I really always kind of expect about a seven, seven and a half, medium high strength and throw from Bath and Body Works. The burn was actually fine though, although it was a little bit sooty. There weren't really any issues you can see in there. You can see some of the soot on the side actually. So it surprised me because this one was a little bit of a hotter faster burner and it did produce some soot but this the throw wasn't there I did keep the wicks trimmed on this one and I did keep it to about a three hour burn time I might grab one more of these just because I like the scent and just kind of keep my fingers crossed that maybe it would be a little bit stronger next time the next candle I finished is the pumpkin peanut brittle and this is last year's packaging the notes are crunchy caramel brittle salty peanuts and toasted pumpkin seeds and this was a top 18 of 2018 scent for me I can't quite remember it may have actually been number one or it was very probably in the top three this scent is absolutely amazing it is creamy sweet nutty a slight salt note comes out. I kind of get the peanut brittle reference. It makes me think of the inside of a Reese's cup, not the chocolate, but just the peanut butter inside. It is wonderful, absolutely delicious, very unique, and something new that they haven't created before, and I love it. The strength and throw is about an eight, eight and a half. It is a great strength and throw. It fills my open concept space, no problem. The burn itself is also great. No issues, a medium fast burner. I kept the wicks trimmed. I did trim off the mushroom tops. I did keep this to about a three to four hour burn time and as you can see it burned itself out not much soot very clean fabulous made the top 18 high on the list for a reason last year absolutely love it highly recommend if you have not tried the scent yet and you like those types of scent give it a try it's fabulous the next candle I finished is the Warm Apple Pie from Bath & Body Works. I do like the label on this one. I really could take a slice of that apple pie right now with, with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. The notes are baked Granny Smith apple, melted brown sugar, and flaky homemade crust. And this scent is absolutely amazing. It is... I'll go on a blend, out on a limb and say the most authentic apple pie scent that I have ever smelled in candle or wax form. You get the baked apples, you get the brown sugar, you get the butter and the pie crust, and it all comes together so deliciously. When I open this jar, I smell hot, warm apple pie, and it is just amazing. It feels, sometimes I think that I could take a spoon and just dip it into the candle and eat it because it smells so realistic. I love it. The problem with this scent is that the strength and throw isn't there. It is a lighter scent. For this particular version, it was about a four to four and a half. So a wee bit stronger than last year and the, the very first year, but still not to the Bath and Body Works standard. The burn itself was okay. It did struggle a bit at first and then it sort of self-corrected and what I mean by that is that when I lit it it was a little bit slower to pull out for the first couple burns I didn't have to cotton ball it. I just kind of let it go and I let it burn a little bit longer than I normally would and then it corrected itself and it continued to burn just fine but it was still a slower burning candle past the halfway mark though it did pick up and the flames got a bit bigger and it sort of changed into like a little bit of a medium burner candle burning candle where I actually had to start trimming the wick so the first half I didn't 
didn't really trim the wicks the second half I did. I still will continue to pick this scent up because of the authenticity of it. I love the scent itself. I just continue to wish that it was stronger. The next candle I finished is this Yankee Candle Medium Jar in Cinnamon Vanilla. I love the full label. So pretty. This is a great scent. It is a creamy vanilla scent with a fresh cinnamon scent. This scent kind of smells like the pitcher. It is a creamy vanilla with like a fresh grated cinnamon. It's almost chai-like in that you get the, the warm spices and you sort of get the, the creamy sweet vanilla. There's definitely nutmeg and clove, cardamom, all of those really great flakes great fall spices. The cinnamon is definitely the dominant spice, but it's not a red hot cinnamon. It's still a baking cinnamon. Unfortunately, this one was very light. I could really barely smell it. I would say it was a strength and throw of maybe a one and a half. I had it in my master bathroom and I really couldn't smell it very well at all. I had to be right over the candle or right beside it to even get a whiff of it at all, which was very sad because the scent itself is really, really nice. The burn itself was fine. It was a little bit sooty, you can see there, and you can see there's just a bit of a residue, which typically I don't have. You can see it did burn itself out. There is quite a bit of oil left at the bottom. I did try the trick where I turned the candle upside down before I burned it, hoping that the oils would kind of like go toward the top, and it just really didn't help this particular one. This was a 2016 pour, so I don't know, just maybe a bad year. I don't think I would pick this one up based on, again, based on the performance, even though I really like the scent itself. The next candle I picked up is the Bath & Body Works Pumpkin Donut Shop. This one was also from last year. The notes were Sweet Bakery Air, Vanilla Glaze, Fluffy Cake Donut, and Pumpkin Spice. And I think this is a great scent. It was underrated last year, and I say underrated, but the burn on this one isn't great. So I'll get to that in a minute. The scent itself, when you smell it on cold sniff, it's like, mm, it's okay. When it's burning, it is a wonderful donut scent. You sort of get a mixture of different donuts. You get an unglazed cake donut. You get a glazed donut with the sweet vanilla icing. It just smells delicious. I love donut scents. You get a lot of the doughy bakery. I love it. It's not overly sweet. It's just fabulous. The burn, as I mentioned, isn't the best. Now, it looks super clean right here, but the first two burns completely struggle. When you light it, it does not want to pull out. It, it's like, okay, this is going to be one that gives me problems, but you just let it go. You let the first burn just go maybe six plus hours. Put it out, you light it again. The second burn, let it go six plus hours. It may even look at that point that it's not going to fully pull out. The third, fourth burns, it corrects itself. What happens when they pour a candle is that they pour the candle and then there's an overpour here on the top. So sometimes the overpour doesn't burn as consistently as the rest of the candle. Should it? Sure but it doesn't always. So I never judge a candle by the first two burns. You really can't give a proper review when you only burn the candle once or twice because it may be great or it may be bad, but really this is the meat of the candle, so to speak. So once I got past the aggravating first two burns, it was absolutely fine was about a medium burner for the rest of the time. It pulled out, I never had to cotton ball it, it was no issue. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the strength and throw on this is about a five and a half. So it's not a super, super strong scent, but it is adequate and I did enjoy it. So I'm glad that I have a couple of backups from last year because I doubt this is one that will come back just because of the burn issues. The next candle I finished is this pumpkin cupcake from this year's label. The notes are whipped buttercream, Madagascar vanilla, pumpkin spice, and freshly baked cupcake, a Bath & Body Works classic scent in my opinion. It is a vanilla frosted cupcake with pumpkin spice. The name is applicable. Definitely a sweeter frosting bakery scent. The strength and throw on this one was about a four and a half five so it was quite disappointing. This tends to be a little bit of a lighter scent but I have had years where it actually is a pretty nice like six and a half maybe even seven strength and throw. So this one was a bit lighter for me. The burn itself was okay. It was a slower medium burn. I didn't trim the wicks on this one at all. It just didn't need it. Toward the end of the candle, the scent did start to distort. So when you have candles like this where you have to burn them for a longer period of time because they're a little bit slower, then the fragrance oils burn off and then you're left with that paraffin wax smell. So, but it was fine up until about like this very last two burns and, and then it kind of just started to smell like paraffin. I do like this scent, it's a classic. I don't necessarily burn it every single year. I wouldn't buy it again in this packaging, but I would might pick it up again 
next year. The next candle I finished is this Yankee Candle Persimmon and Brown Sugar. This scent was a bit disappointing. Not because the scent wasn't good, it's just because the scent didn't match the season for me. When I burned this candle, th it came across as a very sweet, almost candy-like scent. It was almost like it was a sugar-dipped dried fruit. Persimmon, orange, citrusy, different combination of citrus. There was also a bit of a strawberry note that came through to me as well. It was very candied sweet though. I didn't get brown sugar per se when it was burning. It was more of a white sugar, confectioner sugar, kind of like artificial sweetness, candy sweetness that I pulled. So the scent was actually fine. I liked it. It's just I didn't like it for the season. There was also a little bit of a peach note that came out. Just okay for me personally. The tree that I was about a four, maybe even a four and a half. So I was actually pleasantly surprised. For me, Yankees don't do very well in the strength and third apartment. It is what it is. But this one I could actually smell. I did have it in my master bathroom. But when I walked in, I could actually smell it in the uh, space. And it even tried to, tried to trickle out into my master bedroom just a little bit. So I was actually quite happy with that. The burn itself was fine. It was a little sooty. You can see on the side there, there is quite a bit of soot. There were a couple times where the soot was like puff, puff, puff. I did keep the wicks trimmed as Yankee Candle recommends. Um, overall, it was fine. If you like candied, sweet, slightly citrusy, you know, kind of fruity scents, I think you might like this one. The next candle I finished is the Bath and Body Works Welcome Home. I do really like this label. The notes are cinnamon sugar, warm apple butter, clove buds, and brown sugar. And as I said in my haul video, this smells like apple butter on toast. I thought I detected a little bit of a bread note on cold sniff and then when I burned it, it definitely became transparent. You definitely get this sort of stewed apples with nice warm spice. You get a lot of butter and you get a toast note. It's actually delicious. I really, really love the scent. The strength and throw was about a five, five and a half. Sometimes a little bit stronger, sometimes a little bit lighter. I definitely wish this would have been a stronger scent. It was detectable in my open concept sometimes and then sometimes it was a bit light. So I did end up moving this into my master bedroom. The burn was the problem. Woo! Look at this monstrosity. It is atrocious. I mean, it looks diseased, okay? I just have to say, it looks horrible. It kind of looks a little bit disgusting. This one had puny wicks from the very first burn. So, as I mentioned with Pumpkin Donut Shop, I don't give up because it can be an overpour issue. So, I let it burn, put it out, lit it again, let it go. The third burn still hadn't corrected itself. So, I let it go. Fourth burn, I'm like, okay, I need to help this baby out. So, I did cotton ball it around the fourth burn, which did help. Once I cotton balled it one time and once it got past that fourth burn, it did pick up a little bit. I did have to let this one burn about six plus hours to let it pull out. I did not trim the wicks on this one. I didn't need to. There just wasn't enough wick there to even trim. I did keep it in a sleeve. Did all the little extra things to kind of help it. The first half of the candle still struggled a bit. The last half of the candle, it did better. I'm not exactly sure where all this sooty, dirty nastiness came from because I don't recall while it was burning that it was like sooting in the air. I didn't see like active soot. But obviously there was something going on that was I wasn't seeing because toward this last half like I started seeing all this crud in the wax as crazy as this candle looks it actually still smells good it doesn't smell like burnt paraffin so <laughs> crazy. I did pick up another one of these, just one. The scent itself is so wonderful that I just want to give it one more chance to see if maybe I want to pick up a couple more. And I think the packing is so pretty. Look at the shine on it. Really great. This is atrocious. This is beautiful. If you are a seasoned candle burner and don't mind dealing with the issues aforementioned, pick this one up. The scent's great. But if you are a casual burner, don't have time for this nonsense, then I couldn't recommend it because <laughs> this one was a lot of work. The next candle I finished is the Homeworks Vanilla Current Biscotti. I'm just going to take the lid off before I drop it and make a mess. I love the hobnail. I love the deep red of this. It's so beautiful. The notes are red currants, almond cream, brown sugar, and baked cookie. And I absolutely love this fragrance. 
It is a sophisticated bakery scent. You get the tart red currants, which I love. You also sort of get like a goji berry kind of vibe, a slight cranberry. It is vibrant and tart, but you do get the bakery note. The bakery note does come through and it's not the most dominant note, but it's definitely there. And it sort of balances and tones down some of the tartness from those aforementioned fruit. The strength and throw was a seven and a half at first. So I'd say about maybe the first third and then it did reduce to about a six for the rest of the candle. The burn was okay. It looks like a mess in here, but it was okay. The first couple burns started off good and then it started to struggle a little bit. It was slower to pull out and I just let it burn. I let it burn for like seven plus hours. Sometimes I think one day I let it burn for like nine and you see the residue here, but it did ultimately kind of pull out. It didn't really tunnel and there's not very much wax left. I never cotton balled it. I probably could have, but I didn't really feel like I needed to because it was sort of correcting itself, even though it was a slower burn. So yeah, overall, even though it didn't maintain it strength and throw and it was a bit slower to pull out i actually really really enjoyed this one and the scent itself is wonderful and i'm really glad that i have a couple backups it is fabulous if you're looking for something more of a unique elevated slightly sophisticated kind of bakery scent definitely check this one out i'm pretty sure this was still on the website the next candle i finished is the apple weather i absolutely adore the luminary packaging it is so unique and beautiful especially when it's lit up beautiful i don't really keep empty Back and Body Works candle packagings, but I could see myself wanting to keep this one, cleaning it out and putting a tea light in it and you could turn it around and utilize it and it's just so gorgeous. The notes of apple weather are fresh farm stand apples, lavender leaves, and cinnamon bark. So there's been a bit of discussion about this scent. Some people say that it smells just like heirloom apple and it's definitely heirloom apple and it's nothing else. And I'm sorry, but I totally disagree with that. Does this scent have a lot of apple in it? Absolutely, but it is not just heirloom apple and you can't smell a candle on cold sniff and judge it in its entirety based on just cold sniff. Until you burn it, the nuances of the scent, let's say, are not going to come through. So I'm definitely a proponent of burning the scent. And if you don't like apple scents, you're not going to like this one because it is 75% apple. You definitely get a crisp, juicy apple, but it's, it's not as sweet as the heirloom apple scent. It's not as mac apple-y, crisp and sweet and juicy. This one comes together more as like a little bit of a variety of apple scents. You get a little bit of gala, a little little bit of mac but there is a bit of a, a variety 75 percent apple and then about 25 percent of the lavender and sort of the woodsy oak element that i pull it absolutely definitely has lavender in it i can smell it it's there it's sort of an herbal lavender in the background it's not dominant you don't sniff it and think this is a lavender scent you definitely sniff this and think this is an apple scent but there is lavender and there is sort of an oak woodsy vibe that does come through when it's burning it gives it a bit of a freshness sort of an outdoorsy vibe it makes you think of apple weather i do smell this and think that i'm in an apple orchard and there's like a fresh crisp breeze and it transports me somewhere which is what i really love about the scent combined with the beautiful packaging i love it everyone is entitled to their own opinions if you track with my nose then you like apple scents you're gonna like this one because it's apple but there is a variation to it and i really really enjoyed it i love that this one wasn't as sweet as heirloom apple and that it did have that nice freshness to it it was fabulous the strength and throw overall was about a seven and a half your typical bath and body work strength and throw and the burn was great it was a tad sooty. You can see a little bit of the wax discoloration there, but not really bad at all. I did keep the wicks trimmed on this one. It was a medium fast burner. I kept it to a three to four hour burn time. The scent maintained itself through the entirety of the candle and it was fabulous. Absolutely wonderful from the packaging to the scent, to the burn, to the strength and throw, all around like two thumbs up. If you like your apple scents, definitely check this one out. If you like beautiful packaging, check this one out. And the last candle that I finished in August is the Yankee Candle Tonka Bean and Pumpkin Elevation Candle. I did pick up this little baby one, which I think is actually so cute. This is a great scent. It definitely reminds me of the Homeworks Smoked Pumpkin Woods Candle, if, if you got to try that one. Definitely in the same family. I don't have that one anymore to compare, so I can't call it a definite dupe, but definitely in the same family for sure. It has nutmeg, marshmallow, pumpkin, cinnamon, black pepper, tonka bean, firewood, and clove and it is amazing it is complex the smoky black pepper kind of 
aspect just gives it a little something special and extra tones down the sweetness balances it out the spices in this are perfect it's not overpowering it is so good I loved it definitely could see myself picking it up in the three wick elevation if they go on sale the strength and throw of this one was actually pretty good as well it was about a three and a half four for this tiny little baby so I was actually quite impressed with that the burn itself was fine you can see it actually looks quite clean I did keep this one in a sleeve it was like a Bath and Body Works sleeve just to help it did want to like not pull out all the way at first but then it was fine this tapers down just a little bit and it was absolutely fine the rest of the way no problems no tunneling and it was great I really enjoyed this little baby much more than I thought that I would I wasn't expecting much of a throw so I'm happy for what I got from it and the scent was great okie dokie y'all that is it that is 63 wax melt and 14 candles later this video is probably so long thank you so much for sticking in there with me let me know in the comments below what you melted and burned in August did you burn summer scents did you burn fall scents did you maybe do half and half and kind of use it August as a transitional month I would love to hear from you if you did watch this video in its entirety and you stuck around to the end leave me either a summer or fall emoji below I love seeing all of your faces and I love seeing all the fun emojis some of y'all get so creative and it's just so much fun for me if you like this video or found it helpful please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see other videos like this please subscribe I do a monthly detailed empties video not always as huge as this but definitely a lot more sense in the fall and winter candle videos vendor wax videos i do have quite a few videos coming up very soon so if you're interested in those and haven't already please subscribe thank you all so much for all of your support all the comments and likes and just for watching these videos i really appreciate it i love this community and i thank you all so much for always being so kind i hope you all have a fabulous rest of your day thanks so much for watching bye